Razel is a powerful immortal vampire demon noble who has been asleep for over 820 years, probably just as long as my dad went to get the milk a few years ago. Before Razel was sealed, he had little to no emotions and ruled over an empire filled with vampires and nobles. With only one strike, he could commend a person's body to kneel before him with little to no effort. Although due to his overpowered SS rank strength, Razel decided to rest in his casket for a few decades, since he found his current life boring, almost similar to yourself. But before Razel decided to take his leave, Razel has never told his empire where or what he was doing, so to them, they deemed Razel as a traitor who went missing for over 820 years. The only person who knew about Razel's whereabouts were his half-human minion, who he took in from his palace and told him to wake him up after a couple of decades has passed. So basically Razel decided to get the milk like my father and come back after I became famous or an important event has happened. Anyways, now that time has arrived to come back, and of course with his two bags of milks he's been searching for, for all these years. <laughs> on a certain night, a ship pulls a coffin out of the ocean with a golden cross embedded on its cover. Later that night, the people in charge of the coffin are taken out by a man but he cannot open it, no matter how much he tries. After the man leaves, moonlight shines on the casket, opening it, and some emo wannabe black-haired man with blood-red eyes emerges. The gate to the Iran high school closes as the bell rings and a red-haired student runs to the school but does not reach on time. The black-haired guy who came out of the coffin arrives, changing his clothes to the school uniform midway like he's Sailor Moon. The student approaches him, thinking he's not the only one who's late. He notes he has never seen him before. After a moment, the guy disappears, with the gate opening as well. In the principal's office, a beautiful Bishonin suddenly senses a presence and opens the room's door, immediately kneeling before the black-haired guy. He calls him master, while the black-haired guy calls him Frankenstein. Sitting in the office, Frankenstein informs his master that it has been 820 years since he last woke up. He tells him that the place that used to be the academia is now a school. Realizing the world has changed a lot, the master expresses his need for learning. Frankenstein obliges and enrolls him in a class. He introduces himself as Caddy's a trauma de Razel to the class, or however the heck you say that name to be honest. Shinwu, the red-haired from before, points at him, so the teacher instructs Razel to sit with him. All the girls in the class give him death glares as he has stolen the new handsome boy from them. Razel has rizzed up every girl in the class already, including the girl Shinwu seems to like. At the warehouse where Razel's coffin was brought, two men corner the guy who had left it there for its disappearance. One of them bites him, seeing his memories to check what happened. In the memories, Shinwu's classmate witnesses him shooting people like he's an American citizen. After confirming that the coffin was really brought there, the men talk about finding it quickly or else the organization will find them. The man who was bit has now turned into an ugly, disgusting weird beast like myself and the men decide to use him to find the coffin. Sitting in the cafeteria with Shinwu and his friend, everything reminds Razel of something from 800 years ago. As he walks with them on the way home, they hear a scream nearby. It is the infecti bothering Yuna, the girl who saw him shooting people. Shinwu, just like every reckless MC with a savior complex, saves her and pushes the infecti into debris. The beast gets up again, and the scared students run away. The two men looking for the coffin stand behind a wall nearby, and Razel senses them. They observe that he is no ordinary person. Although I'm pretty sure that should have been kinda obvious considering just the way he looks but you know. After losing the infecti, Yuna thanks everyone for saving her. She refers to Razel as Rai while doing that. The other two students also decide to call him that from then on. Ikhan asks him where he lives, and he takes out a photo of Frankenstein with a number written on the backside. The men searching for the coffin are discussing what to do next in a dark alley when two members of the organization appear. They are Jake and Marie, who refer to the two men as M24 and M21. They came to check why the men who were sent to find the coffin were not reporting back. After M21 tells them about the infecti, Jake calls them both good-for-nothing botched experiments, which pisses M24 off. Jake and Marie take the beast man with them, and Mary warns them not to get into trouble if they value their lives. The two men think back to the awful time in the organization when their friends got butchered in front of their eyes and how they had planned to find the ultimate being, Noblis, in the guise of a mission and use his power to get out of there. Jake and Marie carry out a massacre in a hospital, which makes the news the next day, and even Razel's classmates discuss it. On a rooftop, M24 says that the mission is just an excuse for Jake to hurt people senselessly. They notice Razel's friend group passing by on the road. Razel senses them even from far away. Jake and Marie appear there and decide to eliminate the student witnesses. When Shinwu and his friends are on their way home after dropping off Razel, Jake shows up there, but before he can do anything harmful to the kids, M21 appears and knocks them out. 
He informs Jake that there was another witness. Back at Razel's place, Razel is having a heartwarming conversation with Frankenstein about how school is a nice place when Frankenstein receives a message from Jake. Jake and M24 are with the students, while Marie and M21 are on the rooftop. Jake informs them that the last witness has been called there and tells the hungry infectee to eliminate the students. Before he can do anything, Shinwu hits him and runs with his friends. Razel and Frankenstein are shown to be rushing to rescue the students. Jake beheads the infectee for being unable to stop the children and follows them. The students make it to an elevator in a rush, but Jake breaks open the elevator's door. M24 reaches there just in time to see Jake badly beating Shinwu who tries to fight him. Before he can move on to the others, Shinwu grabs his leg with any ounce of strength he has left, declaring that he won't let him touch his friends. The scene reminds M24 of a friend back at the organization who had also tried to stop Jake from mercilessly eliminating his friends. Overwhelmed by the emotions, M24 ends up punching Jake. He also destroys his Bluetooth device, alerting Marie of his betrayal. She says that the organization already knew that they were up to something. After recovering from the punch, Jake reveals that it was in their mission to get rid of them. With that, he punches M24 hard, making him bleed. Knowing he can never win, M24 grabs Jake and self-explodes. On the other hand, Marie overpowers M21 easily with her slashing attacks. Just as she is about to land the finishing hit, Frankenstein stops her. Razel also arrives there, and Frankenstein inquires where the kids are. M21 stares at Razel, thinking he could help him and his partner. He tells them to go to the basement for the kids and leave Marie to him. He knows very well he is no match for her, but he wants M24 to be saved. However, Razel orders Frankenstein to take care of her and asks M21 to lead the way. Back in the basement, Jake is being free as a 2.0 and recovers even from that explosion. He approaches the kids, but before he can do anything, Razel shows up, and M21 charges at him in anger. On the rooftop, Frankenstein easily evades Marie's attacks and hits her with his own attacks. Realizing she cannot beat him easily, she transforms into a new form. Switching to the basement, M21 asks where M24 is. As a reply, Jake mocks M24, calling him pathetic to the very end. This angers M21, but he is unable to hurt Jake. Jake kicks him repeatedly while Razel watches. Switching the scene again, Marie is now much faster and manages to land an attack on Frankenstein, which he has to block. Realizing that humans have come so far, Razel contacts Frankenstein telepathically and permits him to break his seal, along with ordering him to destroy the enemy in front of him. As soon as his seal is broken, a massive amount of energy is emitted from him. He comments that everything about Marie started with him. Marie asks what that means, but he does not elaborate further. He launches his final attack and takes her out, stabbing her with hundreds of spikes. Meanwhile, in the basement, Jack talks arrogantly to Razel, but Razel, being the president of the Sigma community, doesn't even bother looking at him. He controls Jack's mind and makes him kneel before himself, reminding that trash of his place. Jack tries to get up, but Razel knocks him down again. Witnessing Razel's powers, M21 assumes he is the being they have been looking for, the Noblesse. Frustrated and angry, Jack transforms into a giant disgusting beast, still blabbering the same old nonsense. Just as he is about to hit Razel, Razel makes him kneel again. He makes his friends sleep with a hand gesture while Jack prepares for another attack. This time, Razel only glances at him and pushes him into a nearby wall. Holding a droplet of Jake's blood, he declares that his sins would be paid with his blood. A massive amount of energy emits from Razel, squishing Jake's body and causing a blood shower, leaving only his hand. Frankenstein comes down, announcing he has completed his order. Razel looks at the sleeping forms of his three friends and smiles warmly. A soldier reports to the base that an enemy has attacked his unit, which appears to be the Union. Suddenly, an explosion happens nearby. A man appears behind him and cuts him. Several men appear in other places nearby and start causing havoc. A man informs them about the target and orders a guy named Takio to take him out. Takio easily secures the target, finishing the mission. Their captain, Kranz, makes an appearance and tells his teammates to head to the site of their next mission, Japan. Shinwu makes his way to the school with a broken arm. When he and his friend reach there, they notice all the girls fawning over a new security guard. He is M21, but Shinwu and his friend do not seem to remember him because Frankenstein and Razel have erased their memories of that night. After the fight, M21 had told Frankenstein and Razel about him being an experimental subject of an organization called the Union. He said that the Union had an extraordinary capacity for science, and they made people evolve by doing experiments on them. M21 was better than other failed experiments but nowhere near successes like Jake and Marie. The failed experimental subjects were annihilated one by one. He was now the only survivor out of all experimental subjects. After hearing that, Frankenstein had invited him to stay with them in return for him becoming a security guard in the school. 
Back to the present, Razel tells Frankenstein that he is going to do what he told him last night, and Frankenstein goes speechless for a second. Then he takes something out of the drawer. In the classroom, students gather around Shinwu and start doodling on his cast one by one. Razel arrives there and stares at Shinwu's cast before taking out his own marker and drawing a cute doodle. All the girls find his gapmo behavior cute. Throughout the day, Razel sees students use mobile phones, making him feel like a boomer. A conversation about video games with Shinwu and Manabu is the final nail in the coffin for him. After school is over, Razel mentions not having a phone to Frankenstein, and Frankenstein assures him that he will arrange one for him. The next day, Shinwu greets M21 by referring to him as old man. M21 is offended at first, but eventually, the kid's shenanigan makes him smile. When Shinwu goes to the classroom, he sees Razel holding a smartphone. However, his medieval mind has no idea how to use it, so Manabu takes it upon himself to teach him. Frankenstein is checking the news when he gets a cutely typed email from Razel. An 800-year-old man typing like a 15-year-old anime girl sure is funny. Looking at the students reminds him 21 of his own friends. A sweeper comes up to him and talks about the school being a nice place. After a while, a car pulls up to the school and some men come out of it, bothering students and asking for a red-haired boy. M21 sees everything from behind a wall but does not show himself, as he wants to stay hidden. The sweeper asks their leader to move since vehicles are not allowed there, but the beefy man disrespects him and goes for a punch. However, Shinwu runs there and takes the punch to his injured arm. The man sees his hair and accuses him of making a move on his girl. The girl in question is sitting in the car, setting her makeup as if she didn't just make his man cause a ruckus over nothing. Shinwu clarifies that he had just saved her from falling on the road. But the girl somehow thought she was the main character of a dating sim game, and Shinwu wanted her just like every other guy. The man does not listen and starts fighting Shinwu. Razel appears behind M21 and stares at him, which M21 thinks is to provoke him. The man overpowers Shinwu in the fight and even breaks his cast. He picks up the sweeper when M21 shows up and tells him to stop. Tossing the old man aside, he goes for M21 now, but M21 beats him easily. M21 threatens him with his life, and the man runs away with his men like scaredy cats. After they leave, all the students gather around M21, calling him cool. At night, M21 thinks back to his conversation with M24 in which they had talked about being born abnormally, and not having names. M24 had asked him to search for their and their friends' names. Frankenstein appears beside M21, pulling him out of his thoughts. M21 tells him that he has to fulfill a promise made to a friend and asks if Frankenstein will allow him to live there. Frankenstein replies that he should have done that from the start. He tells Razel that he understands why Razel kept him there, and Razel smiles. M21 promises to M24 that he will find their names, and until then, he will live an ordinary life. The Union members stand on the top of a tall building, looking down at the city. The captain explains that the contact with Jake and Marie was cut here, and two failed experiments also went missing, so they have to investigate this case. A short boy and a tall, long-haired girl enter the building where Jake and Marie got eliminated by hypnotizing the security guards. After looking into the site, the boy concludes that this is not the work of a human and that they have to take care of this in their own way. M21 stands at the school gate as students pass through. Shinwu, also called Tashiro, barely makes it in time. After that, the white-haired boy and girl make an appearance. M21 gets the same sensation from the boy's eyes as he gets from Razel. They go to Frankenstein's office, asking for admission to the school. Frankenstein also gets the same vibes as Razel from the boy. The guests do not seem to know him, so Frankenstein acts like an ordinary human in front of them. He messages Razel and sends them to his class. In the class, the boy and the girl introduce themselves as Regis K. Landiger and Sarah J. Loyard, respectively. Everyone in the class seems fascinated by them, even Manabu, which annoys Tashiro. On top of that, the teacher asks him to take care of them. Regis catches sight of Razel and senses an insane aura from him, wondering who he is. During the lunch break, Regis notices every action of Razel and senses godliness in him. On the other hand, Tashiro notices Manabu looking at Sarah with star eyes, assuming his friend has fallen in love at first sight. Sitting in the car on the way home, Frankenstein tells M21 that it was Razel's decision to admit the newbies into his class so they could keep their eyes on them. M21 asks if they are Noblis because he senses the same aura from him as Razel. He does not know the details, but he knows that Noblis possesses power more significant than the Union's scientific capabilities. Frankenstein tells him that long ago, when humans were utterly powerless, they met these powerful beings who would aid and provide for them. 
Those beings thought of it as their responsibility to protect humans because they were blessed with power. The humans respected them and started calling them nobles. Regis and Sarah are among them. M21 asks if nobles are the same as noblesse and if Frankenstein and Razel are among them. Frankenstein does not give a clear answer. They reach home, only to find Razel's friends there, making a mess. Frankenstein's brain short circuits, but like a nice host, he doesn't let his annoyance show and prepares tea for them. Teshiro calls him a nice person for letting Razel and the security guard stay at his place. He tells Frankenstein how the newcomers have nowhere to go. When he had asked Regis about this, Regis shrugged, saying that he would find a place. However, considering the inflation and the county's state, no high schooler can afford to rent a good place. So, Tashiro requests Frankenstein to let Regis and Sarah stay there too. Frankenstein, forced by his kind nature, accepts his request. After the tea, M21 helps Frankenstein with the dishes, and Sarah notices a tattoo on his arms, who had gone to the kitchen to offer help. Sarah tells Regis that M21 has the Union's tattoo on his arm, which means he is a man-made monster. Regis suspects that he must be the one behind the coffin's disappearance. After the school, Regis corners M21 for questions. He expresses his hatred towards men who abandon their humanity to gain power. On the way home, Tashiro and his friends run into the gang from a few days ago. Regis asks M21 how the Union is involved in the unusual happenings lately. From his talk, M21 deduces that he is also after the coffin. However, he does not know that the noblesse has already gotten out of it. M21 does not tell him the truth, so a fight breaks out between them. M21 is unable to land a single hit on Regis. Sarah interrupts them, telepathically telling Regis about the hooligans who are bothering them. Tashiro starts fighting them, taking them down one by one but they outnumber him. When Regis reaches there, he is surprised to see a human fighting so well. M21 interrupts the fight when the leader pulls out the gun. Razel stands on the side with Manabu and Sarah, acting like he can't finish everything without moving a finger. But, for bums like them, just M21 is more than enough. The gang runs off again, and the students make their way home. On the way, Regis discusses with M21 how humans have changed into savages since the last time he saw them. M21 responds that it's just certain humans who are like that but they've admittedly changed. He tells Regis that humans do not need their leadership anymore since they are plenty powerful now. Regis gets a little offended and calls M21 a modified human, which pisses him off. Their conversation ends in them threatening to off each other. On the dinner table, Regis and M21 argue over their ramen, like kids. Regis complains that M21 seconds ramen has more bamboo shoots, and M21 retaliates that his ramen has more soup, so he should shut up. Frankenstein's eye twitches in annoyance at their pointless bickering but he tries not to show his emotions. Regis says he will continue to observe M21 and orders Frankenstein to forget everything he has heard on this table. He thinks memory erasure is working on Frankenstein but is unsure about Razel. He tries controlling his mind, but Razel's weird reaction doesn't tell him anything. The unit sent by the Union discusses their mission at the massacred site. The hacker tells them what Jake and Marie have reported so far. The captain orders everyone to apprehend M21 and M24 if found. Suddenly, some rubble falls off the ceiling, but before it hits a member, Takio shoots it and deviates its direction. The next day, Razel comments that M21 seems accustomed to this life while passing through the gate. In the classroom, Manabu scolds Tashiro for always getting into fights and accuses him of wanting to show off in front of Sarah. Right then, Regis and Sarah enter the classroom, and Manabu immediately goes to sit with Regis and expresses his wish to become his friend. Tashiro suspects that Manabu might not be as straight as he looks. Manibu shares his height and security with Regis, and Regis tells him to be confident about being a short king. Manabu blushes at that, almost seeming ready to change his pronouns on Twitter. Right then, Regis notices M21 passing by the class. During the break, Regis tells M21 to stop stalking him, and M21 defends himself by saying he is just doing his job as a school guard. They start arguing again, and M21 calls Regis a minor, which pisses him off. Frankenstein informs Razel that Regis and Sarah's families have not changed. He does not get to finish his report before Razel complains about his tea being bitter. At Manabu's house, Manabu is working on the security checks his uncle had asked him for by the end of the day. Tashiro goes to the kitchen to cook something for them, when Manabu receives a notification of the security system getting penetrated. Manibu blocks the person behind him, who is Tao from the Union but Tao re-enters the server again. This time, Manibu sends a virus to him as a gift which amuses Tao. They keep going back and forth, finding each other interesting, before Tao gets serious and hacks multiple systems at once. As Manibu tries to block them, Tashiro accidentally pulls out the PC cord. Manabu plugs it in again and after the attack stop, he steps outside to call his uncle. Behind him, Tashiro checks the PC, only to see a message from the hacker asking what is wrong. Tashiro assumes it is a girl and starts chatting with him. 
As he chats, he finds out the person on the other side of the screen is a 24 years old guy. Tashiro's brain is twirling, now almost sure that Manabu belongs to the rainbow community. However, Tashiro is a good friend so, he promises himself that he will never let anyone bully Manabu over it. On the other side, Tao informs his teammates that M21 is seen by the cameras around here, but nothing has been seen of the other three. They assume M21 is staying there for some sort of mission. The captain orders Hammer and Shark to capture him. Regis and M21 are arguing like an old married couple for the NTH time. Regis asks him what his objective is, and M21 replies that it is the promise to a friend that keeps him going. Frankenstein interrupts them and orders them to clean up the mess. Regis and M21 refuse at first, but Frankenstein has lost all his patience by now, so he goes off on them, forcing them to work. As they do it, Regis asks why Razel is the only one not cleaning up. Hearing that, Razel gets up and starts helping them too. Frankenstein wants to commit seppuku at this moment because he let his precious master do Hao's work. The next day, M21 receives his first salary. He feels weird about living an ordinary life when he is an experiment. On the way home, Shark and Hammer corner M21. After introducing themselves, Shark asks what happened to M24 and mocks him, which angers M21, and he starts attacking him. Shark easily dodges all attacks and cuts him on several parts of his body in return. Hammer tells Shark to go easy on him, and that is when Regis and Sarah appear. Regis comments that Shark's hair is disgusting and Hammer is a fat pig. He calls them the embodiment of vulgarity and Shark gets mad, charging an attack at him. Regis is about to control his mind, but M21 stops him from doing so and takes the attack instead. Captain Kranz jumps in then and stops the fight. He asks M21 if the kids have anything to do with his mission, and he replies that they do not, trying to save them. He realizes they still think he is a Union agent, so he plays along and goes with them. After they leave, Regis is furious as he thinks he got fooled by M21. Despite their 24-7 quarrels, Regis had grown to be quite fond of M21 and had started trusting him even. This is why this betrayal is hurting him badly. Manabu and Tao have another fun hacking session, but this time Manabu has come prepared. Tao tracks his information and finds out that he is just a kid. Since he lives close by, Tao intends to meet him in person. Frankenstein and Razel enjoy a tea with just the two of them. When Regis and Sarah get home, Regis seems mad and goes into his room immediately. Sarah tells Frankenstein he is mad because M21 said he was living here for a mission and left with his friends. Frankenstein thinks it could be a big problem if M21 was really living here to get information on them. At the DAW 5 seconds base, M21 is tied to a chair, and the DAW 5 guys ask him about Jake and Marie. M21 does not answer anything, and Kranz asks if he cannot say anything because he is on a special mission. This makes M21 realize that these guys have completely wrong idea about him, and he seems to be the only source of information for them. Takio, being the Mother Teresa of the Union, gives him water when the others step aside for a bit. M21 thinks this is his best chance and proposes that he will tell them the truth if Tao digs up information on the experimental subjects for him. Kranz accepts the deal and asks him again what he knows. M21, wanting to play around more, says he would not say anything until they bring him ramen. On the rooftop, Tao approaches Takio and comments that he is different from other members. Takio responds that it is all thanks to his sister. Manabu and Tashiro talk about the security guard not showing up for days and ask Regis about him. Regis, still in an awful mood, says that he does not know. Manabu suggests going to his place to hang out the next day since there is no school. He gets a text from Tao, arranging an offline meetup. The next day, Tashiro and Sarah are carrying groceries to the director's house when Tashiro notices a guy getting bullied in an alley. Meanwhile, Manabu is sitting in a cafeteria with Tao, finally meeting him. Manabu is a little tense, meeting someone who hacks into the police department, and Tao tells him to loosen up. He asks why he does that daily, and Tao replies that he enjoys clashing with him. On the other hand, Tashiro beats up the bullies, and Takio thanks him excitedly. He is being very different from how he usually acts. He assumes Tashiro and Sarah are a couple and calls them lovely, making Tashiro flustered. Tashiro finds him funny. Menabu and Tao are also having a fun conversation. Tao says that he feels the emptiness of being alone because he is surrounded by guys who do not value him and only have brute strength going on for them. Manabu thinks of Tashiro while thinking about brute strength and empathizes with him. Because of the meeting, he has come to respect Tao a lot, so he calls him boss. Tao gets flustered seeing someone give him respect. Takio tells Tashiro about his sister, who is around the same age as him. He hasn't seen her in years, but he wishes she could study in Japan someday. Tashiro gets a text from Manabu, so he says goodbye to Takio and leaves. In the evening, Tao offers Takio that he can look for his sister if he wants. It might be worth a shot. He asks if this is all a hassle since the Union is holding his sister hostage to keep him here. Takio replies that it's not because his sister is his everything. 
M21 still hasn't revealed any information, so Shark gets violent with him. Takio tells him to stop because getting the information is their top priority. Shark calls Takio soft and tells him that he eliminated all the women and children Takio had spared during their previous missions. He provokes him by saying that the organization might have finished off his sister too. Takio takes out his gun to shoot him and finally free us of that annoying bastard, but Tao stops him. After school, Shark and Hammer corner Regis, telling him to come with them. Regis refuses and gets into a fight. He easily manipulates Shark's mind and overpowers him. Shark assumes he is the noblest and transforms. However, it is still not enough for him to beat Regis. Regis is about to eliminate him when he sees Toshiro and Manabu getting taken as hostages. For the sake of his friends, he has no choice but to go to them. Shark and Hammer take the students to the Daw 5 base, and M21 gets shocked seeing them. Regis gains consciousness and finds his hands tied with a special handcuff made to restrict superpowers. Shark threatens that he will harm his friends if he tries to break out. Regis glances at M21, and M21 looks away like a girlfriend who has been caught cheating. Sarah tells Frankenstein and Razel that she and Regis have a faint mental connection, which only breaks when one is unconscious or dead. Remembering that the people she is talking to are mere humans, she apologizes for talking about things that they have no idea about and leaves. Frankenstein calls to Shiro, but he does not pick up, which alerts them that they might be in danger. Back at the base, Sharks tells his teammates that Regis is an even match for him, even in his transformed form, which means he has a connection to the coffin. M21 counters that he is just an insufferable brat, no one special. Shark curses M21, and Regis mocks him, saying that it is unreasonable to expect a modified human to care for a comrade. Looking at M21, Tashiro and Manibu wake up, and Tashiro starts bombarding questions. Shark picks him up, and Takio stops him. Tashiro recognizes him, just as Manabu recognizes Tao. He calls him boss, and everyone starts laughing. He asks what is going on, and Shark pushes him towards M21, saying he is the one behind everything. Regis also blames him for everything, but he does not understand why he had helped him before. Sarah, followed by Frankenstein and Razel, finds the place. Toshiro and Manabu ask M21 what is happening, but M21 doesn't answer them. Hammer goes outside to get snacks, and Shark beats Toshiro again, trying to get info out of M21. M21 lies that he has no connection to these students outside of a few interactions at a job, so beating them up to provoke information out of him is useless. Shark doesn't buy it and still plans to hurt them. Takio and Tao stop him from beating them further and suggest using drugs to wipe out their memories. However, Kranz decides to be a jerk like Shark and takes his side. Shark starts beating them again. Regis looks at M21 and gets mad that he is not helping the children. The betrayal by M21 is still hurting him. He interrupts Sharks himself and provokes him to hit him instead of others. Having an ego as small as his schlong, Shark gets provoked easily and turns all his attention to Regis. He tortures Regis with consecutive punches, saying that he will send him to the Union's lab. Hammer runs into Sarah after getting snacks and gets into a fight. He causes an explosion after getting a slash by her. Meanwhile, Toshiro punches Shark in the face while he torments Regis. They stop for a moment when they hear the explosion. Kranz sends Takio upstairs to back Hammer up. M21 finally gives in and says he will give them the information if they let the students go, but Kranz says they do not leave any unknown factors behind. Shark gets to doing the only thing he is good at, bullying powerless children. He chokes Tashiro, squeezing his neck, while poor Manabu tries to stop him. M21 doesn't know what he should do. On one hand, he is so close to finding the truth about his comrades, and on the other hand, these children are in danger. Regis looks at him, waiting for him to do something. He still believes that M21 is a heartless backstabber, but he cannot comprehend the look on his face. M21 thinks back to the good time spent with the kids. Suddenly, he gets the sensation of M24 patting his shoulder, which is enough to give him an answer. He tells Regis that the rest is up to him and jumps towards Shark, slitting his arm. He feels like he's betraying his friends from the Union, but he'll apologize to them for that in hell. Takio runs into Frankenstein and Razel on the roof. Razel goes ahead, and Frankenstein clashes with Takio. Two beautiful Bishonen fighting over who has more fangirls. Takio fights with a big box, which reveals a long gun after it breaks. Sarah finds Hammer transformed with a new weapon. T21 attacks Shark, hoping to end this before his arm wound heals. Shark asks permission to finish him off from Kranz and Kranz permits him. Shark gets serious and attacks M21 back, overpowering him easily. 
For the sake of children, M21 sustains brutal injuries. Before Shark can finish him off for good, Regis intervenes. On the rooftop, Takio also takes the enhancement drug D, which makes him extremely fast. Shark's transformation, on the other hand, doesn't help him against Regis. Kranz has to intervene himself, and he takes the drug, too. However, instead of helping his partner, he absorbs all power from Shark, revealing that D's true purpose is to enhance his ability exponentially by absorbing his teammates after they have used it. He becomes extremely strong after that, easily overpowering Regis. M21 wants to buy time for the students to leave but has no strength anymore. Falling on the ground, he sees Razel entering the room. Takio has a gun to Frankenstein's head, intending to end things immediately. Frankenstein realizes he is no match for Takio's speed unless he unleashes his power. Takio pushes the gun's trigger, saying that he also has to finish off the guy who got away earlier after dealing with him. This pushes Frankenstein off the edge, and he unleashes his power. The students are surprised to see Razel there. Kranz asks him if he is the intruder and Razel counter-questions that who permitted him to talk. He pushes Kranz and Tao into the ground with mind control, saying that he has not permitted Kranz to move. Hammer charges attacks from his huge weapon, but Sarah easily deflects them. She then summons a scythe in her hand, calling its sole weapon Death Scythe. The scythe redirects his next attack back at him, which causes rubble to fall on him. Frankenstein pierces multiple parts of Takio's body with his spikes. Takio tries to dodge, but his efforts end up in vain. He thinks it is his punishment for getting so many innocent lives involved in battles, but the thought of his sister stops him from giving up. He becomes stronger than before, which is still not enough to defeat Frankenstein, but Frankenstein develops an interest in him. Kranz tries to fight Razel, but none of his attacks land on him. Razel sends him flying with no effort. To make himself stronger, Kranz asks Tao to use D so he can absorb him. Tao obliges and goes towards him. Manabu tells him not to do whatever Kranz says, but Tao has already accepted his fate as a modified human. Manabu pleads to Razel to save him. Takio charges at Frankenstein, but Frankenstein binds his whole body with his spiky ropes. He stabs Takio with multiple spikes at once, which ends the fight. Frankenstein is about to end his life when Sarah appears, commenting that he isn't a regular human. He notices a soul weapon in her hand, which means she is a high-ranking noble. Takio asks Sarah a favor, which is to save the boy who was with her the other day. He feels sorry that he had to get involved in all this. Finding out that Takio is actually a good person, Frankenstein spares his life. In the basement, Manibu keeps begging Razel to save Tao's life. Kranz threatens to eliminate Manibu, which makes Tao turn on him. He picks up Tao again, intending to absorb him, but Razel makes his body still. He tells his friends that there is no need for begging among them, which makes them happy. Then he turns to the enemy and makes all the blood in the room float, multiplying it and turning it into a blood space. Regis knows that this technique, called blood field, is only accessible to those who can manipulate blood. Razel's strength right now might make even Goku look like a small fry. He crushes Kranz under the weight of blood and makes him disappear. Takio and M21 wake up in Frankenstein's house the next day, with Tashiro and Manabu still unconscious. Frankenstein is reporting to Razel when blood comes out of Razel's mouth. This worries Frankenstein, and he tells his master to take care of himself using the power too much because it puts pressure on his body. Out of his kind nature, Razel couldn't say no when the boys asked him for help. Then, Frankenstein apologizes to him for breaking the seal without his consent, and Razel forgives him. Tao praises the dishes spread out in front of him, excited to try out new kinds of food. Takio and M21 join them at the table. Regis and M21 go back to fighting like 12-year-olds over ramen. M21 is at the terrace, regretting everything when Razel appears and tells him he is not weak. He licks a droplet of M21 seconds blood, which shows M21 that he has the power of a beast in him. Tao tells Takio what happened, and M21 hears them from outside. Tao says they cannot go back, so he will hack the Union's server and make it look like they died on the mission. Takio replies that the Union has his sister. Tao tells him to be calm and reveals that after research, he found out that his sister doesn't exist, and the Union was only manipulating his memories. Takio gets down to his knees, realizing he has been fighting for nothing all along. The next day, Tao informs M21 that all the records about his comrades are destroyed. He and Takio are about to take their leave when M21 begs Frankenstein to let them stay here because their situation reminds him of himself. As expected, Razel shows no objection. He would think Frankenstein's house is an orphan home with the way he takes everyone and their mothers in. Tashiro and Manabu go to school after a while because of recovery. Tashiro was so bored while recovering that he ended up reading three volumes of a shoujo manga and a character in it reminded him of Razel. 
He is one of those guys who can just stand there and girls would flock to him. His words die in his mouth as soon as they enter the gate and see girls flocking to M21, Tao, and Taiko. They all look like characters from some Y and game. Tashiro gets annoyed while Manabu greets Tao. Tao tells Manabu that he will be working as a guard from now on. Razel, the original heartthrob, appears and all the girls turn their attention to him, fawning over him. Frankenstein looks at Razel from the window and recalls Razel saying he enjoys his life with the kids. Tashiro is frustrated because of being an unpopular loser with no game the whole day, and the guards patrol the school, tasting an ordinary life. At lunch, Tashiro complains about girls liking Razel too much even though he does nothing, not knowing that being a handsome much a wannabe is enough for girls. Manabu asks him what kind of girl he likes and Sarah passes by them right then, making Tashiro blush. Manabu gets the hint and he and Razel plan to help him in this case. Seeing how the security guard guys are a hit with girls, they decide to take help from them. At first, the guys are keen on helping Tashiro too but they try to run away as soon as they hear the topic is about love. M21 states that this topic is out of his field of expertise, and Tashiro is agitated that someone like him is so popular among girls. They become even more hopeless when they find out the girl Tashiro likes is Sarah. Then, Razel requests them to help him, leaving them no choice. Tao searches for some date plans on the internet and selects a disco night date that both Tashiro and Manabu find ridiculous. Takio tries to help him with confession but saying something so embarrassing makes him puke. Turns out all of them are single losers, too, who cannot give a single useful idea to save their lives. Everyone then goes to Frankenstein's office for help, and Tashiro lies on the couch shamelessly. They ask Frankenstein if he has had any experience with love. Frankenstein starts blabbering gibberish, boasting about his game with girls, but all of it is useless. The next person they go to is Regis. Tashiro asks him about her preferences and if she is dating someone, but Regis says he does not know anything. He and Sarah are not close enough to know things like that. M21 says it is useless to get advice from him, which turns into another fight between them. Razel arrives and tells Regis to assist Tashiro. Regis gets down on his knees immediately, obeying him. Tashiro tries writing a love letter to Sarah. He hardly comes up with a few lines to write before everyone bombards him with their senseless suggestions, and he ends up discarding the paper in frustration, which falls near Razel's feet. Their next plan is to make Tashiro look cool in front of Sarah by scoring the most points in a basketball game. The plan is to pretend to play badly so Tashiro can look good. Regis hypnotizes the coach to start the game. Razel is hopeless on the field, walking instead of running and dodging instead of catching. Regis forgets about the plan and starts playing seriously. M21, being the Naruto to Regis Sasuke, also starts playing seriously, and it turns into a competition between them. They score several points back to back while Tashiro does nothing. He finally gets a pass, but his point gets stolen by Takio. The whole thing ends in disaster. Tashiro accepts his fate of staying celibate forever and decides to stop trying. Sarah approaches him and gives him the crumpled love letter, which she found on her desk. Tashiro wants to dig the ground and bury himself, knowing she has read the letter. Sarah says that developing feelings for someone is totally natural, but taking help from others is pointless because a person should stay their true self. This assures Tashiro, and he feels a weight lifted off his shoulder. Before leaving, Sarah gives him a faint smile, which shocks him. When he and Manabu reach Frankenstein's house, they get told about how their memories were erased before and that Razel is planning to do the same again. Both of them are hurt knowing that because they don't want to forget about that experience. Regis says that humans' memories about them are always erased for their own safety. Tashiro gets convinced and allows Razel to do so because he believes his feelings for everyone would stay the same. Razel does it and everything goes back to normal the next day. An old man in a suit appears at the school. The nobles sense his presence as soon as he enters the gate. The security guards stop him from going further, and he shows off his aura, asking what half-assed humans like them are doing there. Regis and Sarah appear out of thin air then, kneeling before the old man and calling him clan leader. The old man scolds Regis for getting involved with humans and neglecting his duty. Before he says more, Frankenstein shows up, calling the man Jejudal K. Landiger. In the throne room of a castle, several nobles discuss the rumors of Regis and Sarah meeting the one in the coffin. They refer to Razel as an enemy for betraying the nobility. Two men named Karius and Rajak discuss Regis and Sarah's actions. Karius finds it no big deal, and Rajak tells him to set his personal bias aside because, as clan leaders, it is their duty to serve the Lord and obey her orders. Apprehending the traitor should be their first priority. Rajak's little brother, Rail, appears and asks about Sarah. Rajak tells him to call him clan leader and leaves. Rail gets annoyed, saying he is qualified too. Karius laughs, mentioning that Rail just came out of confinement 
which pisses him even further. Frankenstein takes Jejudal to his house. Jejudal confirms that Regis and Sarah were sent here to find the one in the coffin, Razel. He shares that there have been many changes in Lucadonia, the noble's country since the previous lord went into eternal sleep. His daughter, Raskrea, took over as the new lord and is searching for Razel as the one who drove the previous lord to death. Many senior clan leaders went into eternal sleep, which resulted in young family members becoming leaders. This explains Sarah having a sole weapon that is passed from one clan leader to the next. Jejudal requests that Razel return to Lucidonia with him if he wishes to prove his innocence. Razel expresses that he wishes to stay here a bit longer. Regis tells the security guards that clan leaders are the heads of 13 households with the highest noble blood. Jejudal is House Landigger's clan leader and Regis' grandfather, which explains the similarity in their hair. Tao and Takio had thought that the black streak in Regis' hair was just a horrible fashion statement. Offended by the comments on his hair, he mocks Tao's bowl cut and Takio's long hair. Shifting back to the main topic, the guys ask how Frankenstein knows Regis' grandfather since their tension was intense. Regis replies that Frankenstein knowing Jejudal was a surprise to him and Sarah too. It's obvious that he's no ordinary human, but they don't know his real identity, making him even more mysterious than Razel. At Frankenstein's house, Frankenstein and Jejudal have an exchange about how they don't want to be in each other's presence. Jejudal mentions something about Frankenstein hiding his fangs in public and how he is the madman who slaughtered many nobles in Lucidonia years ago. Long ago, Frankenstein was known as a noble hunter who used to torment nobles. He had the same abilities as nobles despite being a human. Razel stood in front of the Lord as the Lord requested him to move into the castle instead of staying alone in his secluded mansion. There's a grand room for you. No, I decline. And pretty maids. No, I decline. He declined his request and left as Jejudal and Ragger entered the room. They reported to the Lord that the noble hunter was a human who obtained powers through some unknown method. The Lord ordered them to go after him and bring him alive as he wanted to talk to him. One night, Frankenstein attacked the knights as usual, but this time, Jejudal and Ragger appeared before him. They introduced themselves to him and asked him to come with them, which he obviously declined. Ragger stepped forward to fight because both of them fighting would be disgraceful. Frankenstein and he went head to head during the fight. Wanting to finish things soon, Ragger summoned his sole weapon named Cardus. Frankenstein got excited seeing it and summoned a weapon of his own named Dark Spear. Just one swing of his weapon wiped out a forest. Jejudal asked how could a mere human possess such intellect and power. Frankenstein took offense at that and asked why humans couldn't hunt nobles if nobles could hunt humans. Nobles could manipulate human blood and mind just for fun. Ragger countered that a blood pact could only be formed if the second party allowed it. Frankenstein said that all nobles weren't that pure. Some used women and children and used them, before discarding them, and Frankenstein's purpose was to punish them. After a power surge, his shirt ripped off, and he started losing control of his power. Seeing this, Jejudal summoned his sole weapon, too, and launched a combo attack with Ragger. The clash resulted in a huge power surge, and Frankenstein got away. Frankenstein got into a mansion to hide, only to find Razel there. Not knowing who that was, Frankenstein pretended to be a servant in the house but got busted immediately. Jejudal and Ragger appeared there and kneeled in front of Razel, telling him that the Lord had asked for Frankenstein. Razel changed Frankenstein's attire to that of a butler and declared he belonged to him. Jejudal and Ragger left without a question, which left Frankenstein wondering who could that powerful man be. After five years, Frankenstein became familiar with everyone. He sparred with Ragger while Jejudal told Razel how so many nobles hated him for sheltering someone who was an enemy to nobles. He requested him to at least send him in front of the Lord, showing obediency would be better for him. Later that night, Frankenstein served Razel his tea and mentioned how he never saw him leave the mansion. Razel replied that he always lived like this and didn't need anything more than looking at the scenery from his window. He also showed praise towards Frankenstein's tea. The next day, Frankenstein walked through the castle hall as people whispered all kinds of names behind his back. Entering the throne room, the Lord greeted him warmly and started an idle chat with him. He shared that he and Razel were like father and son, but Razel didn't seem to like him, which is why he envied Frankenstein. The Lord suggested he form a blood pact with Razel, allowing him to live longer. Frankenstein declined as he had his pride as a human and did not want to serve a noble for eternity. The Lord told him about the system which bound them to protect the race. Frankenstein mocked him and asked why he wouldn't abolish the worthless system. The Lord laughed at that, standing up from his seat. He said he found him interesting. The Lord's followers requested him to get rid of Frankenstein. However, the Lord defended him and expressed his wish for him and Razel to form a pact. A guy named Yurikai came forward and started protesting. 
The Lord didn't listen to anyone, which seemed to anger Urukai. Frankenstein ran into Jejudal in the castle's hall. The Lord had called him again to deliver some messages. He asked Jejudal to spar with him, as he couldn't find Ragger. Jejudal refused and told him to be careful, as Razel was risking his life to shelter him. Urukai appeared there and told Frankenstein to spar with him provoking him with insults. During the fight, Urukai easily overpowered him. Frankenstein had to summon the Dark Spear to match up with him. But that wasn't enough because he didn't have complete control over it yet. Urukai expressed his anger towards him, saying that even nobles weren't allowed near Razel so a human living by side for eternity was ridiculous. According to him, Razel only existed to fulfill his sublime duty, nothing else. This made Frankenstein mad and his power went berserk in anger. It angered him that people thought of him as nothing but a noble to protect them. As he lost all of his senses, Razel and the Lord appeared there. Razel used his own insane power to stop his mindless attacks. He licked a droplet of Frankenstein's blood, forming a pact with him. Frankenstein woke up after a while and went to Razel. Razel informed him that they both had to visit the castle since they had offended many. The power he used on Frankenstein took a toll on his body, for which Frankenstein felt ashamed. Frankenstein served him the tea with his blood in it. Razel declared that they were now joined with blood and soul. Frankenstein kneeled before him, promising to stay by his side forever. Back to the present, Jejudal shows his regret for not stopping the blood pact between them. He says that Razel should return to Lucidonia to prove his innocence. Frankenstein replies that Razel likes the life he has now. He has many friends surrounding him, so he does not want to go back. He used to be all alone back then, but now there is only vibrance around him. Jejudal decides to leave alone, giving his blessings to Regis and Sarah. At the castle, he tells the Lord that everything she heard was a lie. The Lord doesn't believe him and orders Rajak to bring Sarah back so she can read her mind to know the truth, along with the order to put Jejudal in jail. Rail interrupts them, offering to bring Sarah back as they know each other. The Lord accepts his request. The students goof around in class in their free period. Everyone is making paper planes, which Regis finds ridiculous. He seems to be the only one with a stick up his ass because even Razel enjoys the activity. Rail lands in Japan. As soon as he reaches the school, he puts everyone under mind control. He faces the security guards and stabs M21, showing disgust towards the stench of a modified human. Regis and Sarah go there to check what has happened. Regis asks Rail what he is doing here and he gets excited to see Sarah and tells her he is here to bring her home. He says that it is the first time he has seen her since he proposed to her. He spent 10 years in confinement, only thinking of her. Regis asks him again and Rail lifts him up, choking him. Sarah tells him to stop and he obliges like a simp. She declines to go back with him and asks him to leave. She also faintly threatens him with his brother's name. Rail sighs and backs up, for now, saying he doesn't want to make her sad. Regis tells everyone that Rail is a pureblood of the Kersha clan. In the past, he had proposed to Sarah and got rejected. His fragile male ego got hurt and he destroyed their immediate vicinity, for which his brother put him in confinement. Tao and Takio mention how they weren't able to track his movements at all, even though he looks like a child, around Regis' age. Regis reveals that he is 199 years old and Rail is more than twice his age. Regis warns them that he will definitely start something again. Frankenstein carries out checkups of Tao and Takio, which turn out well. M21 is also healing quickly, probably because Razel brought out some of his power. Tao and Takio are ashamed of themselves for being powerless before Rail. M21 is a friend who stood up to them when they had nothing, so being unable to protect him is embarrassing. They beg Frankenstein to give them the power to protect their comrades. Frankenstein accepts their request, and decides to run experiments on them. Regis discusses Rail with Sarah and how his attitude is unbearable. He thinks that he is only infatuated with Sarah because he hopes to take over the Loyard clan through engagement. Regis promises that he won't let him have his way with her. Sarah pats his head and tells him not to worry. Then, she goes outside to deal with Rail herself. Frankenstein pleads to Razel to let him take care of this matter because his identity getting revealed would become a problem. Razel lifts his seal and permits him. Sarah meets up with Rail and asks what he meant by not wanting to make her sad. He says that it is a secret. It angers him that they sent her here with Regis, which made her get in contact with foolish humans. He proposes to her again and Sarah rejects him again. She says that humans have taught her a lot of things and she wants to stay with them, not him. Rail cannot believe that she has chosen them over him. Before he can display his anger, Frankenstein appears. Rail attacks him but nothing has an effect on him. He easily keeps up with Rail and manages to injure him. He tells him to unleash his true power if he wishes to beat him. Rail summons his sole weapon and attacks him at once, slashing his chest. Frankenstein gets excited seeing his power and summons his dark spear. Their high-scale fight makes everyone aware of it. 
They can destroy the city if they keep doing so. Regis appears and assists Sarah in stopping the fight. Seeing Sarah wield a weapon against him, Rael has no choice but to show them the Lord's order. Sarah gets down on her knees immediately and says yes to the summon. She leaves with Rael at once. Frankenstein describes the situation to Razel and asks what they should do. Then he goes to Regis and provokes him to go after Sarah, even if it is against the Lord's orders. The Lord gets the news of Sarah coming back. She thinks back to her childhood when she would see Razel around her father, eagerly waiting for him to come back. Sarah arrives at the castle and kneels down in front of the Lord. Raskria questions if she encountered a noble there, because Jejudal had said that the reports were a lie. Sarah refuses to answer and Raskria gets inside her mind, making her scream in pain. Rael asks the Lord to stop doing that because Sarah is innocent. He tells her that he didn't meet any noble there, only modified humans and a blonde guy, who is far too powerful to be a human. The Lord stops his mind control and orders Sarah to be put in jail for refusing to answer her. She also orders Rajak to interrogate Jejudal. Razel, Frankenstein, and Regis make their way towards Lucidonia on a plane. He gave Tau, Takio, and M2 new pills named T2 that would boost their powers, in case the Union messes up with them while he is away. The plane enters Lucidonia's atmosphere and they plan to jump off it. The nobles discuss how it is unprecedented that two clan leaders are in prison at the same time. They believe that it must be affecting the Lord too because she used to trust Jejudal a lot. A guard comes into the room to report that a crashed plane was found. They decide to send the guards there to get information first. Walking through a jungle, Regis comes to a stop and tells his partners that beyond there is a forbidden region, where knights would be patrolling. Frankenstein and Razel don't listen to him and keep walking. They reach Razel's old mansion and enter. Frankenstein and Razel sense a strong aura coming from a room and tell Regis to wait outside. They go to check, only to find the Lord's sole weapon, Ragnarok. Regis senses guards outside and goes to stop them, covering his face. He takes out a few of them before his mask slips off and the guards see him. As he is stuck among several guards, M21, Tao, and Takio take out the guards and save him. They say that they had hidden in the plane to come here. Razel doesn't mind it, as they already have several unused rooms. Razel tells them that Jejudal and Sarah are in trouble because of protecting him. He is under suspicion for causing the previous Lord's death. M21 says that it is about time he tells them who he is. Frankenstein explains that the noblest is a being different from all nobles. Razel asks them if they would be ready to assist a criminal and they all say yes. Regis is doing it because his grandfather trusted him. Razel thinks back to the time when the previous lord had said that he changed since Frankenstein came along. He said that forming bonds with people is important and that the notion that the noblest should stay alone forever is a waste. He had also asked if Razel had any interest in becoming the lord. Razel makes up his mind to visit the sanctuary, which is located in the Lord's castle, meaning he has to meet the new Lord. Everything about the intruders is reported to the Lord. It becomes apparent to her that Regis has joined Razel's side too. She decides to give punishment to Jejudal for protecting the enemy. The nobles protest her decision, saying that Jejudal raised everyone here and that he must have a reason to act this way. Raskria listens to them and decides to give him a choice. To her, trusting people has only made her a fool. She thinks back to the time when she was working so hard to please his father, fulfilling her duties as the next lord, but she overheard her father asking Razel about being the lord. She was broken that her father chose someone else over her, even though she did everything. Raskria goes to Jejudal in prison and asks him about the truth. Jejudal tells her that he met Razel back there and asks for punishment for lying to her. Raskria announces Jejudal being stripped of all his titles and getting ordered to eternal sleep. She also orders Rajak and Karius to bring all the intruders to her and kneel before her. Razel's group is making its way to the castle. Regis and M21 go in as bait first to distract the enemies and Rael appears before them. Sarah escapes her cell and faces clan leader Rosaria. She says that she must stop Jejudal's forced eternal sleep. Rosaria doesn't let her pass through so, a fight starts between them. Rael informs Regis about the order of Jejudal's eternal sleep. He believes that Jejudal is a reason for Sarah's confinement, and Regis should suffer too as his grandchild. M21 tells Regis to leave Rail to him, as he and his friends are stronger because of Frankenstein's medicine now. He attacks Rail first and manages to scratch him, which pisses him off greatly. Both Sarah and Rosaria take out their sole weapons to fight. Karius and Rajak spot Regis, and Karius goes after Regis. M21 seconds group manages to keep up a fight with Rail. Tao and Takio sneak attacks on him while M21 fights with him head on. To get him in the target range, M21 uses his provoking technique and calls him an old man, riling him up. After they manage to land a proper attack on Rail, he summons his sole weapon. Karius tells Regis to leave Lucidonia and only come back when this has all proven to be a mistake. Regis replies that he is not going to run away. 
He wants to know what was the reason behind his clan leader's lie. And if Jejival really turns out to be guilty, he will accept appropriate punishment. Karius is impressed by his determination and tells him to get past him first. He offers that if Regis manages even to graze him, he will assist him in seeing Jejival. Regis thinks that this is his greatest chance. M21 doesn't stand a slight chance against Rail with his sole weapon. Tao and Takio get near him to attack but it is all in vain. He defeats them in a flash, calling them trash and garbage. Suddenly, Rajek appears beside Rail, and from the other side, Frankenstein emerges. Rajek asks Rail if he knows him, and Rail lies that he let him off the hook last time. Before he even finishes his sentence, Frankenstein pierces several spikes through him. Frankenstein tells him he has already fought several life or death battles, including one with the previous Kersha leader. Rajek tells Rail to move aside and, as a courtesy, summons his sole weapon from the start. Frankenstein also summons his dark spear and tells everyone to move out of their vicinity. Karius beats Regis without breaking a sweat. He tells Regis to go back already, but Regis replies that his running away would mean punishment for Karius so he cannot do that. Also, he doesn't want to let down the people helping him. Raskreia stands in front of her father's coffin and says that she will correct the mistake he made of trusting Razel. The Lord orders for Gujital and Sarah to be brought to the sanctuary. Rajak is so fast and stealthy that he disappears in the air. But Frankenstein still finds him and keeps up with his attacks. He makes clones of him and Frankenstein fights all of them at once. Tao calls his boss awesome, and Rail angrily throws his weapon at him. Frankenstein saves them by deflecting the weapon but gets a hit by Rajak in the process. Rajak slashes himself to make things fair because Frankenstein would have gotten hit if it wasn't for Rail. Frankenstein finds it admirable and says that he can see why the previous clan leader chose him as his successor. Regis reaches his limit and falls into Caria's arm. He tells Karius to keep his promise and throws a light punch at him. At the sanctuary, the Lord sentences Sarah to eternal sleep, too. Everyone objects, and Gujital defends Sarah and Razel. He says that Raskreia cannot do much to Razel because he has Frankenstein by his side, the only human to get acknowledged by the previous Lord. Rajek takes a hit from Frankenstein, and Rail suggests merging their soul weapons. Rajek says that their father split his soul weapon into two which is something not permitted, but he still did it because he wanted to leave them both with weapons, giving both of them their own duties, so merging them would be a disgrace. Frankenstein tells them that their father, Ragger was the one who trained him, and Rajak really resembles him. He seems excited to face Kersha's new leaders. Vigital says that Raskreia isn't ready to be the lord who binds all nobles together. He tells the clan leaders that the reason the lord hates Razel so much isn't because she thinks he is the cause of her father's death, but because the previous lord chose him over her as the next lord. If there is anything he should be sentenced to eternal sleep for, it is for not guiding her in the right direction. He says that she hasn't even tried to understand his father's decision and has only let her emotions get the better of her. The clan leaders prevent him from speaking further. Gujital admits that he has spoken way more than he should have embraces himself for the punishment. Raskreia summons Ragnarok, and just as she is about to cut Gujital, the door opens, and Razel enters. Gujital asks Razel to take care of everyone as his dying wish. Razel says that he will not let anyone die. Before he reaches the Lord, a clan leader comes in front of him and fights him. Not a single of his blows lands on Razel. Other present clan leaders try to take him on too, but no one manages even to scratch him. Razel controls their minds and pushes them into the ground. Although only the lords can control the minds of clan leaders, the noblesse's power is even greater than a lord. Finally, Raskreia steps forward and releases Ragnarok's power. Sensing the power, everyone heads to the castle directly. Razel doesn't get phased by even the lord's power. He asks her why she is holding back, as a lord should possess the same power as he does. She then uses blood field but Razel deflects it too. Realizing she has lost, she falls down on his knees, crying about losing to Razel again. The only person whose acknowledgement she wanted didn't choose her. She was alone then and she is alone now. The clan leaders stand as a shield in front of her, reassuring her that she is strong. Razel comments that it is useless unless she masters the proper use of the power granted only to lords. The clan leaders charge at him again but it is all futile. Raskreia thinks about what Razel said regarding her mastering the lord's power. Razel uses the blood field, intending to put an end to it when Raskreia gets up and uses it too. Both fields end up cancelling each other. Razel assures her that she is not alone, unless she has the power of a lord which is greater than anything else. Both Razel and Raskreia lose strength in their bodies, their friends catching them. As Kersha's siblings arrive, Razel pulls out another Ragnarok. Both Ragnaroks float in the air and create an image of the previous Lord. The Lord says that this is the residual thought he left in Ragnarok, meaning he is not alive by the time it is heard. 
He explains the events leading up to his demise. He starts with the fact that nobles can live semi-permanently, but they remain unchanging in order to keep old traditions alive. Meanwhile, humans lead short lives, but they constantly evolve. A smart human once said to him that he should get rid of the rule he doesn't like. So, in order for nobles to evolve, too, he devised a plan. To entrust Lucadonia's future to the new generation, he decided to enter eternal sleep. A lot of senior clan leaders followed him into doing the same. He ordered Jejital to stay and watch over the future. Everyone asks why Jejital stayed quiet if he knew everything. Jejital admits that it is because the situation became worse after the Lord's death, and he hid the truth, hoping it was right. He apologizes to everyone for that, ready to accept any punishment. He tells the Lord to carry on with his sentence when Carius comes running and throws Regis beside Jejital. Regis begs to be executed alongside his grandfather. Carius says that Regis is a promising future clan leader, so putting him to sleep would be a waste. Rajek agrees with him and offers the same proposal. He says that the youngsters are precious pillars that support the noble society, so they must stay here for a long time. All clan leaders kneel in front of the Lord, begging her to spare them. Raskria breaks Jejudal's handcuffs and hugs him. She says that he was the one who loved her and supported her when she was alone which is why she could never finish her off. The previous Lord's image says that Razel, Jejival, and everyone love her dearly. He apologizes to her for dying without telling her and says goodbye. He disappears into the sword and Raskreia hugs it, crying. After recovery, Frankenstein and others are ready to return to Japan. Regis and Sarah have been granted permission to study there, as well. Raskiria joins Razel in the garden and asks him what her father was like. He thinks back to the conversation about becoming the Lord. The previous lord had only proposed that to him because Raskiria was too young back then, and he wanted Razel to guide her. Razel had obviously declined the offer, promising to stay by his side as the noblest. He tells Raskreia that her father was a proud parent, which makes her laugh. Razel and his friends fly back to Japan, as things get better in Lucidonia. Tashiro and Manabu are happy to see them, and they continue their normal lives there. That concludes the recap of Noblis, let me know what you thought of this anime down below and I'm out.